everybody, it's Ruby here today, and today I wanted to do a book review on a couple of poetry books that I recently read. Uh, poetry is something that I have a love-hate relationship with, where I really have to love something in order to buy someone's book. So this is a rare opportunity for me to discuss some of the things that I have encountered. First, I wanted to mention a bit of an update. I'm not really sure if you guys like hearing updates from me. I generally like hearing it from YouTubers, but this is also like a booktube channel, and less of a lifestyle channel, and I try to keep it as straightforward as possible, so let me know. Uh, but part of why I wanted to do, discuss this is because I have been away for quite a while. I looked at the number of videos I've done over the last school year, and it is really bad, especially compared to last year, and I really wanted to apologize. I know I apologize a lot for not updating very regularly, but I thought that I would at least discuss sort of what's going on, and hopefully sort of discuss what my plan of attack is for the next little while. So I recently just finished the bulk of my undergraduate degree in psychology. I finished the winter semester in April, and then I started a spring semester, which is like a condensed semester, in May. And that's been kind of why I haven't been able to update a whole lot. Fourth year was really intense. Even though I knew most of the concepts and I was fairly comfortable in what I was learning, there was a lot more expected of me through assignments and just general writing. So it was incredibly busy. And then I did have a bit of a break between semesters, but I really wanted to focus on just like centering myself, making sure that I wasn't too stressed out, and just taking some time out to do my own thing. And especially during the break, although I read, uh, I didn't really finish anything in time to really post anything, so I didn't really feel comfortable doing any sort of book reviews. At the moment, I am working as a research assistant, um, as a tutor, and I am going to a conference in June where I will be staying there for a couple of weeks to also just take in the country because I'll be in Europe, so I'll be on vacation. What I plan to do is travel vlogs. I always say that I'll do travel vlogs and I never do because I do want to focus on what I'm doing at the time, but I will be staying in a really awesome place for the conference, and I will be visiting some places specifically in the Netherlands and Germany, so I thought I would share that. I would like to get back into doing weekly videos. The other thing is, is that uh, to pat myself on the back, I was accepted into a master's program in the program that I was really focusing on this year of embodied cognition. I had to defer it by a year, and it's a conditional acceptance, but I will be doing that uh, in, in about a year. So I'm really excited about that. And that's sort of what everything was culminating to become. So I really thank your, your guys' patience, and I really still like doing this. It's just, I find that doing videos like this do t still take a lot of brain power. You do have to read a lot, you do have to think about it, and I generally want my videos to be thought out and considered in a lot of different ways, and you really can't do that when you're also doing a lot of studying. Okay, so on to the poetry books. I never really thought that I liked poetry. I remember on the first day of my high school English class, my English teacher asked us all who liked poetry. It was sort of an introduction to the fact that we would be analyzing poetry to sort of show that it was universally accepted, and I was the only person to not put up their hand. I think the reason that I thought that had to do with the fact that when I thought of poetry, I thought of epics and ballads and Shakespearean dense poetry that I generally didn't didn't really like that much, and I didn't really consider songs to be poetry. Not because I don't think lyrics are poetry, but just because it's technically within its own genre. And I don't really read lyrics by themselves. There was certain kinds of poetry that I did really like and enjoy, but I didn't really bother to look that much of it up. I considered it to be few and far between. I generally liked more contemporary things, and I think that often contemporary poetry is really hard to find because it isn't something that 
an editor has collected into like classic literature. It's something that is like a living, breathing thing and it's really hit or miss, I think, as to whether or not you connect with it. I also think that poetry, because it is so much of an emphasis on being able to affect someone and be have an emotional response, it's not like a book where you can kind of become invested in something. I think that you generally have to have experiences that relate to the poetry that you're reading. And at the time, in my English class and throughout sort of my high school career, I really wasn't old enough to understand a lot of what the poets were getting at. If you read a poem about regret, but you really haven't been through anything major, how are you gonna really think about regret? Anyways, so on Instagram I started to see poems that I was really connecting with, that I really loved. I would send them to friends, or I would save them on my uh, phone, but I felt like I really wasn't doing these poets justice because I wasn't reading their stuff, I was just coming across it online. So the first poet that I came across was Rupi Kaur. Kaur? This is a really common last name, because I know it's a Sikh name, and I still have no idea how to pronounce it, so let me know if you do. Um, so Milk and Honey. Uh, this poet uh, is uh, like an outspoken Indo-Canadian author. She posted a picture of herself with menstrual blood on her pajamas on Instagram as a way of sort of showing empowerment or at least of body positivity and it had been taken down for no reason. Uh, Instagram's guidelines didn't specify that it violated it in any reason so she campaigned for it to come back and it did and so she was kind of outspoken about that. There was a couple of news articles on it and that's how I came across her and her poems are like I connect with her to a large degree. Um, she sets up her uh, book into four parts and they have to do with the hurting, the loving, the breaking, and the healing. So both very empowering emotional poems as well as inspiring ones. There's definitely a lot of variety and a lot of different um, topics that I could relate to and really like. The second one uh, I came across through Rupi, I believe, and that is Bone by Ursa Daly Ward. She's British. Uh, I believe that she's fairly outspoken on social media as well. She also talked about the importance of book reviews, which is part of why I'm doing this, and also of the fact that someone who's white might not necessarily connect as much as other poetry, which I also believe. I didn't like her stuff as much as the two other poets, but because she does have a little bit longer poems that are very personal to her and are about family politics and things that she had to deal with with family separation, which are things that I've never really had to deal with, nor do I have any sort of context with. So although I didn't enjoy them as much, I don't think that had anything to do with style or skill and it had more to do with just the, the general topics of what she had been talking about. Uh, the third one is Salt by Ira Wahid. I'm, I'm, I apologize. I'm butchering that. I looked it up to see the pronunciation and just failed completely at it still. Uh, she is a lot more well known. As far as I know, she's actually having her poems studied in uh, some high school classes. And I do see a lot of her poems uh, on social media. People will uh, share a lot of her stuff. Um, and hers feels a lot like Ruby's. Um, very poignant, very emotional. But So the reason that I actually came across her poems um, is one in particular. I believe that it has to do more with oppression and dealings with like racial politics, but I found personally that this could be relatable on a couple of different aspects. Um, so here it is. So it's no might make them angry. But it will set you free. If no one has ever told you, your freedom is more important than their anger. Uh, which is amazing, I think, uh, and something that we definitely don't discuss as much as we should. 
So all three of these people talk a lot about their experiences with uh, identity and relationships and racial politics and I think definitely deserve a lot more recognition than they're given. Uh, so I thought that I would discuss them. That's everything. Um, I couldn't really talk too much about the, the, what was necessarily in the poems just because it's not like a book where there's a lot of plot in them. Um, I basically just sort of talked about what I liked and the style and hopefully that's enough and hopefully you check them out. Uh, if you look up uh, any of these names you will see some of their uh, examples of their poems so I would suggest you do that. And again I wanted to apologize for being MIA so for so long and I hope you'll forgive me um, and definitely comment down below if there's any poets or poems that have strikes you as being particularly poignant or that you always come back to and also comment if you like the updates and if you would like to see some travel vlogs and um, if you like the updates uh, and other things like that and if there's anything else you want to see uh, so I will talk to you guys later so like subscribe do your thing and I will talk to you guys later